All right, guys, we're back. So we were talking about different types of electrodes, different types of F groups, okay? Now, the next thing we need to talk about is how different elements, alloying elements, or things that are added to help the mechanical properties of our material. So let's talk about this a little bit. The number one thing that we're going to see is C, carbon. Now, carbon is the greatest thing in the world if we know how to use it, okay? Carbon makes it extremely strong and extremely hard. Here is the payoff. It loses ductility and toughness. If anybody has a cast iron potter pan, maybe their mom does, and they broke the handle, it cracks very easily. Well, it's really strong, but it's not bendable. Okay, and it loses ductility. So that's kind of the problem with uh, carbon. Okay, so whenever we weld on carbon and we know there's 0.03% uh, or more, it's considered medium or high carbon steel, that we must preheat and postheat it. So it does something great for us, but we also have to remember there's a payoff to whatever we have. Okay, and then we can add different things like deoxidizers with silicone or nickel or copper or any of that, it can help us, okay? So depending on whatever material we're going to use. Now, the first thing that we need to remember, there's three rules in welding that will help you out immensely. Rule number one, matching my base metal with my filler metal. This means if I'm working on mild steel, I want to get a mild steel rod. The second one is I want my uh, filler metal as strong or stronger than my base material. Okay, so I want to make sure that I'm choosing the correct rod in tensile strength, whether I have a 60,000, a 70,000, 80,000, or whatever it is, then I'm matching it in tensile strength. And then rule number three says 90% of what I do is based on thickness of material. As many of you have figured out, Thinner material requires less heat or less amperage, and thicker material requires more heat or more amperage. Okie dokie. So we can see that uh, after the electric classification, like E7018A1, it tells us how much is in it. Okay, so A1 says it's 0.12% carbon. Uh, what is it? Manganese, silicone, nickel, chromium, molybdenum and vanadium. It tells us how much it is. Okay, so it's telling us this is how much rather than actually giving a, a specific percentage. It says for this much, this is what's in it. Okay, it's kind of like a shorthand. All right, deposition rate. In order for us to select the correct rod, we also need to understand how fast do we need to deposit it? How fast do we need to put it in? So when we're talking about a 7024, that is a high deposition rod or a jet rod. The payoff, there is a payoff. Because it's so liquidy, in order for you to go very quickly, you can only do it in flat and horizontal fillet only. Okay. All right, stub loss. So this is one of the reasons why sometimes stick isn't as popular as it used to be. Because, of course, we have loss of material. Well, think about it. This is metal. We're losing that. Okay. Um, when I went to school for a 50 pound box of 6010 rod, just like what you're welding on, it cost me $50. Currently today, when I purchase uh, for these, they are $152. Okay. So we can see that the cost becomes extensive, especially when we're throwing part of it away. Okay. Now, the other, well, let's go back. The other thing is, is that not only that, uh, maybe we put this against uh, flux core welding, which also means that I don't have to change the rod. It's on a wire wheel, so I can continually weld and not have any waste as well, okay? But we also want remember that the stick equipment is less expensive. All right, so low carbon steels can do a lot of different things. So let me talk to you about how do I get an idea of my amperage, okay? So 
This is going to involve a little math, guys. Get your calculator out. You're going to need it. So the average diameter electrode is one eighth inch. So if we're looking at this chart, hmm, well, it's kind of, uh, I'm not sure. So average diameter electrode is an eighth of an inch, okay? Regardless of what the rod is, okay? And if I put this into a decimal, how do I do that? So I said eight divided by one, and it comes out to point one, two, five. If I knock off that decimal point, I get 125. And I can ballpark my amperage at 125 amps. Now, it doesn't mean I have to weld there, but it does give me a jumping off point if I'm not certain about something. Now, if we look at these, this information, a 6010 or a 6011 or a 6013, I can see that it kind of puts me kind of in the middle of everything. Even with the 7024, any of these, now if I look, well, here's the eighth inch, it kind of puts me in the middle. So it allows me to go up or down with the information. Same thing, low hydrogen, huh, right here, bang, right in the middle, 125. But it doesn't mean that we need to not make an adjustment, okay? Now, the other thing is, uh, what should our arc length be? Well, our arc length should be what? It should be from the end of our rod to the material, okay? That's our arc length. And our arc length should be the same diameter as our core electrode, or one eighth of an inch if we're using an eighth of an inch, or three thirty seconds if we're using three thirty seconds, okay? Now, I've got another one for you. How large should my bead be? My bead should be two to two and a half times the diameter of my rod. Roughly speaking, my bead should be three-eighths of an inch if I have an eighth of an inch uh, diameter, okay? All right, now, there's electrode selection charts, and this is kind of important to kind of use until you get an idea of what you're working on. So what this does is that it gives us a different electrodes on the top, and then it gives us variables. What's a variable? Well, these are things that can change or I might need, okay? So maybe I can only run in DC electrode positive. Well, if I can only run in DC electrode positive, I'm gonna choose all the rods that I can run in DC electrode positive. And then it tells me I can run this one, I can run this one or this one, okay? So it gives me an idea of what I can run. It'll tell me, okay, well, if I need more ductility, so the number that is a, let's see, if it says it is a one, I think it's the best, and a 10 is the worst. Yep, one is the best and 10 is the worst, okay? So the thing is, is that, um, oh wait, 10, excuse me, it's the other way around. 10 is the best, okay? So here's the thing, I wanna pick the one that has the highest rating for what I'm trying to do, and I want to get the most highest ratings out of it so that I can use it to its fullest potential. Okay, pretty cool, right? So we can look at these different uh, variables and we can choose a rod that helps us accomplish what we're trying to do. Okay, so like if I have an open root or poor fit up, okay, well, if I have poor fit up, it says a 12, 11, or 10, right? But I want to run a DC electrode positive, so I can use a 10 or 11. Okay, it gives me ideas of what I can do and what I shouldn't do. Okay, and this one's in your book as well if you need to go back. All right, guys, so remember, some electrodes are designed to work exclusively with direct current electrode positive, electrode negative, and AC. But remember, alternating current is not really allowed when we talk about structural material. Structural material is anything that is 3 sixteenths of an inch and larger, Sheet material is considered 3 sixteenths of an inch and smaller. We want to make sure that we select the proper electrode for the job. So we want to make sure that we are what? Rule number one, matching our base metal to our filler metal. Rule number two, making sure our filler metal is as strong or stronger than our base material. And rule number three, we want 90% of what we do is based on thickness of material. This will help us get the proper electrode, and then go to those different variables, okay? A5.1 is a 
specification because it has a spec. And this specification holds all of the classifications for carbon steel electrodes for stick. A5.5 is a specification and it holds all the electrodes for stick for low alloy. Okay. All right. So when we weld with direct current, we want to make sure that the machine is set to the correct polarity, electrode negative or electrode positive. And we want to understand that AWS organizes these electrodes based on characteristics into F groups. Um, after we open low hydrogen electrodes like 7018, after four hours, they have to be put into an oven between 250 and 300. Okay. And uh, we also want to make sure that the electrodes don't get wet. Okay. So here we go. All right.